Welcome back to the Mining Pod. On today's show, we're joined by Anthony Power, our resident mining analyst. We talk about mining stocks through the last month, including a little section on the chaos in the banking sector, Marathon's large deployments, and some new metrics to be aware of. Welcome back to the Mining Pod. Today, I'm joined again by Anthony Power, our resident mining analyst for Mining Memo, the newsletter accompaniment to this podcast. Anthony, this is a great day for you to join the podcast and for us to record because banking stocks are going absolutely wild right now while Bitcoin is ripping and Bitcoin mining stocks are also ripping. That being said, we need some fundamental analysis throughout all this noise. And that's why we got you on the show to go through your minor mining update. You can find the uh, written version of this in Mining Memo, our newsletter, just go to the Compass Mining website, click onto the content tab into articles, and it'll be at the top there, or go to Anthony's Twitter account, which you can find in the description below, and you can read along with us. But Anthony, again, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Great. So we'll jump right into it. Let's just start off with a little context here. We are recording uh, Monday at 1130 Mountain Time, uh, I guess 130 PM Eastern Time. And the lay of the land is SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, was shuttered last week. Silvergate Bank uh, announced that it was going to voluntarily uh, liquidate itself about two weeks ago now. And then yesterday, Sunday, Signature Bank, there was an announcement that the FDIC and uh, state regulators had decided to shut down that bank. All three of these banks had touches on crypto, notably Silvergate and a Signature were used uh, quite often by crypto banks or crypto companies in order to bank. This morning, we saw a lot of commercial-sized banks see their stocks halt trading on the New York Stock Exchange. SMO went down 60-70%, just more contagion in the banking sector. On the flip side, we saw Bitcoin go up about 10%. It's about $24,000 as of right now. And that means that our favorite mining stocks are also shooting up quite a bit. Mining stocks are often a beta play on top of Bitcoin, meaning if Bitcoin price goes up, Bitcoin mining stocks go up a lot. If Bitcoin goes down, mining stocks go down a lot. So right now, as of 1.30 Eastern, our change leaders for the day is Core Scientific up 27%, Hut up 21%, Marathon up 18%, and Digihost up 18%. The smallest gain right now is Mawson, basically about flat. So big day for mining stocks. And then I'm going to toss it over to you. It's weird to look at this picture, though, and, and try to see like why Bitcoin is going up. The thing that made the most sense to me was Binance did announce they're buying $1 billion worth of Bitcoin, Ether, and BNB this morning. But besides that, it does seem to be some sort of narrative play, but there's not a strong link there at the moment. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting the, the level of increase today. That came as a, as a bit of a shock because Bitcoin spiked. All the news of the weekend was right, as you said, about SVB and the, the issues there and then the issue with Signature and some of the other banking institutions, which again this morning um, rocked markets initially um we've seen some recovery i know the the uk um bank of uh arm of hsbc have come in and 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 informed the markets they're prepared to um purchase the uk arm of svb um and so that will um alleviate the uk government having to sort of uh worry about the deposits for for those people in there so hsbc will sort that out but yeah the mining stocks um as you say bitcoin up you know, 10% earlier today, around about eight and a half, nine percent now. The mining stock's far more volatile than Bitcoin, as we've alluded to in previous podcasts. And we're seeing, you know, two or three of them at nearly 20% or even above 20% increases today. So um, it, it's a good day today, but let's be honest, last week we saw um, these mining stocks uh, drop considerably again from that, from that, um, previous uh, like fortnightly high up a couple of weeks ago and uh, so we're just playing recovery sort of in, in, in share price at the moment um you know uh, iris energy uh, a couple of weeks ago was five dollars a share and it's it's you know even though it's had a good day today it's still hovering around the two dollars and um, 60 mark so you know half the price it was a couple of weeks ago so the volatility of miners is is really there um fundamentally though from a from a february update um, we saw some really good um, uh, increases in hash rate, and um, you know, two, two especially from from the likes of Marathon Digital and Right Platforms, um, 
bugs significantly increasing. So we're about to increase their operational hash rate by about 30% in a month. So that's, uh, you know, 2.2 exa hash. Um, you know, you, you're talking like, you know, switching on the likes of the size of Argo blockchain in terms of a, of a, of a hashing rate there uh, in a month. They've also got about four and a half exa hash of machines that are waiting to be energized, and that takes them to 14 exa hash. And that, that's the sort of news I think shareholders have been waiting for for probably well over a year. I can go back to 18 months ago when they started to put their growth um, um, graphs out to the uh, public domain. And you could see clearly when they were expecting to switch on. We're, we're still probably about 12 months behind that, but it, it gives a better feeling of them, you know, starting to get to where they should be. I mean, they they stated, you know, by towards the end of this year, they should be at 23 exa hash. Um, and we're just starting to see those steps now. Yes, they're starting to build on that. And that, that's, that's, that's really good. Right, right, blockchain. Sorry, right, sorry, right, uh, platforms have um, increased their hash rate. Um, that, their operational hash rates are nine point eight, but actually their operational hash rate. Um, if you looked at the nearly two exa hash that they've got for their immersion cooling um, facility, um, you know they they'd be closer to twelve exa hash. In, you know, running pretty good at the moment. We've got some news to say that one of the facilities is about to go live imminently, but the other um, um, the other facility that they've got for immersion cooling is going to take a little bit longer due to the just the bad weather, the damage they have there. Um, so they're still working through that there. But again, they're sort of getting to where they said they promised they would be by the end of the first quarter. So that's positive news there. Um, cipher mining. Um, I included cipher mining for the first time in my analysis. Um, I'm always looking for new miners that will regularly put out their uh, data. And since December, Cypher have put out a monthly update. So we've had three updates from them in the last three months. Um, there was a gap in, in my analysis this month for a miner, so I was able to incorporate incorporate them in there. They they've grown, um, you know, over twenty percent from their January to February. So they went from four point three to five point two um, XR, and um, you know they look like they you know they're in that sort of second tier mining group, the likes of Bit Farms and uh, and uh, Clean Spark, you know, um, progressing pro progressing well. Um, Hive also managed to increase their hash rate in a month, uh, but not on the same sort of scale. But they are, um, they've got the orders for their uh, Intel um, Hive machines, that their, their, their buzz machines that are being installed each month now. So we'll start to see, you know, the more miners come in each month. And they've already achieved three exa hash in Bitcoin hash rate now uh, in the month of February. Not towards the end of it, but during the month, they got to three exa hash. And that was their, uh, an achievement. When you think about Hive, you think about the fact that they, you know, 18 months ago, they're effectively an Ethereum miner with very little Bitcoin machines, ASIC machines. So they obviously had to change their strategy with Ethereum um, uh, going through the the, the, the the fork. And, you know, Bitcoin is really the the, the, the only possible, um, really possible coin to mine at the moment. So they've been slowly increasing the uh, amounts of Bitcoin miners. And they achieved, as I say, three exa hash during the month. So that was a that was a good target for them to achieve. We need to see more about what's happening over the next twelve months. Um, so hopefully they'll 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 come out and give a, you know a more update of what what's happening, especially with minor prices where they are at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's been it was it was a good month for for sort of five or six of the miners. Bear in mind, we saw a massive drop in uh, so an increase in difficulty. So I think it was like nearly twelve percent average for the month. That means miners. Are mining less Bitcoin, so some of these miners, you know, increase the hash rate, keep up with the global hash rate, and you know, get get those those Bitcoins produced and get the returns that they much most you know most need. Um, but yeah, interesting month. Yeah, definitely an interesting month, a, a pretty positive month. And as you noted, difficulty was up quite a bit uh, from from uh, January and February, uh, miners are definitely having their backs against the wall, but Bitcoin's price has been pretty friendly. February was flat, as you noted in this piece, but uh, moving into March or we're mid March here now, Bitcoin's price is a little better. Year to date, we're actually up almost like 50% uh, against the lows. So some, some positives and some negatives here. It does seem like miners are 
finding their stride, right? And I like the point about Riot and Marathon, which the, the two giants in terms of the market caps, in terms of people's portfolios, people often think of miners. So if they're going to have a miner, they probably have Marathon or Riot. And those two miners had some hiccups last year, uh, mainly Marathon in this case with the movement out of Arden where they weren't even mining during most of the summer. But they're moving towards 14 exahash online. It does look like they'll get to that 23 exahash as they start using applied digital uh, and the the new stuff at King Mountain in Texas for mining Bitcoin and also some international stuff. Riot blockchain or Riot platforms, as we should say now, had a good 2022. At the end of the year, they had some issues though with um, some freezes. So it seems like that's being taken care of slowly. Let's talk about some of these metrics that you brought up. Uh, very interesting within this piece. So if you're following along with us, this is towards the bottom of the article. You bring up hash rate utilization, Bitcoin sold, Bitcoin hodl, year-to-date Bitcoin production by exahash. I think the utilization one might be the best one to go over. That's a newer metric that we're looking at. You might have used it before in this update, but the other ones make sense intuitively, like how much Bitcoin I'm holding or how much I'm selling. Tell me a little bit about Bitcoin utilization and then how you rank the miners against that. So so Bitcoin utilization is looking at the at the hash rate they have um at the end of at the end of February and determining based on the global hash rate what they should have actually produced compared to what they actually produce. To a certain extent, those that produce the highest Bitcoin by an exa hash. And we've we've seen the sort of over the last eighteen months, it's usually the same three or four companies. Well, hash rate utilization is both I res energy with it, with you know we literally operate at ninety nine percent of their hash rate. So they they effectively they couldn't really produce more Bitcoin unless they were extremely lucky with the hash rate they have. So if you if you take their hash rate of I think it was one point seven three exa hash and look at that as a percentage of the global hash rate, look at the amount of Bitcoin and mining rewards that are achieved for the month as a whole, and then looking at what the 1.73 as a percentage of, of that total, the expectation. So, you know, you don't need to look at what they produce. Just look at, you know, I've got a hash rate. This is what I'm expected to produce. Compare that with what they actually produce. And that gives you a sense then of how much, you know, of their machines were, were utilized to, to drive that, to drive that amount of Bitcoin. There, there is, you know, in general, there, you know, there is an element of luck in Bitcoin. We saw back to this week there was a, there was a, um, one of the blocks was produced by, I think it was a, a miner who had literally five petahash. So, you know, if you were looking at when I would achieve a block with five petahash, it might take you a number of years to to achieve. But the lot was, you know, they achieved it this week, and so there is an element. But when you're talking about the size of the global hash rate being, you know. In excess of three hundred exa hash, and a miner with um, you know three percent of that, uh, you know. So if you look at Clean Spark with six x six x hash, and they've got three percent of the global hash rate. What was three percent of the global monthly rewards achieved? And you know, according to the utilization here, they they got ninety six percent. So you know, really strong performances by Iris Energy, Hyde, Clean Spark, Cipher as well, Bitfarm, all over ninety percent. And um, Maru was at 90% as well, and um, based on what they had operational. And I had to make a, a calculation for, for, for those miners that switched on a significant exa hash during the month. You know, the, the expectation is, you, you, you know, um, you know would, the, would the machines be turned on the 1st of February or the 28th of February? I take, a, I take an average when it's when a significant amount of, unless the company stipulate that they switched on such a date. But when you're installing miners and switching them on, you know, it's going to take, you know, to install 20,000 miners in a month, it's going to take longer than a day. Um, I think last time I looked at this, it was like, you know, um, one, of the, one of the miners was saying 1500, installing 1,500 miners a day is a good day. That's a good day. If you can install 1,500. So to install 22,000, that could take you 15 days just installing them. If you were doing it around, you know, literally every day without any hiccups. So I looked at um, the likes of Mara and Riot um, for the for the start of the month, and I looked at an average hash rate for the for the period because they'd increased by, you know, over twenty percent both companies. It was sensible to use an average hash rate for that. So the utilization is based on the on the average. Um, 
if they specifically give me an oper an operational hash rate, I've used operational hash rate. Um, but it's a good it's a good way of of looking at how they're utilizing what utilizing what's available to them. So the hash rate, you know, the declared hash rate is is um, you know what are they experiencing using? You know, are they managed to get the miners up and running for the majority of the time? And you can see, you know, most of the miners there were over ninety percent. So a, a good indice. And um, huts at sixty nine percent. Well, we know we know why huts at sixty nine percent. They they've got issues with one of their energy suppliers. So um, that that represents um, about point seven of their total hash rate. So um, it brings down their effective hash rate by about thirty percent. So you can see actually the um, the level of utilization. If you discounted the 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 uh, the the, the six hundred uh, 50 peta hash with the um, Ontario site, you, you sort of, they, they would be the 90s as well. So there was a, there was a reason for that. Argo, well, Argo have, have generally been submitting four updates over the last sort of 18 months. And so that's that's not totally unexpected. Um, right, are still, even though they got a great hash rate, they're still switching off for thousands of hours a month um when the energy price um is unaffordable or it makes sense to switch off so that you know they are utilizing that and they're still looking at the energy credit side of it so they, they have a whereas it might show low low utilization they tend to have low cost of bitcoin we look at what's actually costing once you take the energy credits into consideration so but um but yes yeah, so it was a different it was a different um index i also thought this month would be interesting to show the bitcoin sold because you know, we you know we've long waited now for probably over two years to find out when Hut were going to finally finally sell uh, sell some. And um, I can always think back to the interview with Sue and uh, Jamie. Um, you know, when Bitcoin reached five hundred thousand, that's when they start selling. So um, you know, it was interesting. And you can understand, you know, miners have had to change the strategy now. Um, you know, to look at how they're going to uh, cover their operational costs. A lot of the miners have been using dilution to cover their monthly operational expenditure. So uh, I think I, a couple of um, months ago, I put in an article to say, you know, how what, what levels of dilution companies have been utilized in the last 12 months. And some of them have diluted quite significantly, but you, that's been covering their month, monthly operational costs and some capital expenditure. And, you know, the likes of Hot and Clean Spark, you, who diluted you know, quite a significant amount of last twelve months have been utilizing that. Now it's a case of we need to look at all the levers available and selling Bitcoin is another lever for, for raising much needed cash in this market to cover your to cover your immediate costs. So that they're, they're looking at continuing to sell, but they're looking to sell what they mine. So they don't really want to impact too much on the hodl. Because they've got a really sizable hodl over nine thousand coins. And that's a you know see the bitcoin rise even as a day's 10 percent increase today that's a you know 10 percent increase in the huddle value so you don't want to sell too much of that but they have indicated they will sell within what they mine each month to cover operational expenditure and that's to be honest that that's to be expected um and um, most of the miners are selling what they you know within what they mine so right sold slightly less than what they mine mara sold what they mined and um, Bitfund sold, sold exactly what they mined in the month. So you can see that sort of, you know, that, that, that they seem to be following suit, some of these miners. Uh, Clean Spark sold actually more than they mined, um, as did Argo um, and, and, and Digihost. But the rest of them sort of within, with it, with, 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 with exactly what they mined or, or within what they mined. So you can, sit, you can see how these structures are playing out now. Production buying X Ash is, you know, it's a standard of update that um, which I put out every month. Um, and there's no, there's no shock to the likes of Bitfold, Hive, Iris, and CleanSpark taking those, those four positions. Um, Bitfold's had a, had a, had a strong month. Um, I did actually, um, I didn't get all the information from one of the miners, so DMG didn't provide me their huddle and. If you look, if you take what they mined in the month with their operational hash rate, they would have been number one in February. And I think they would have been number one in January. So actually, DMG might have been 
um, top ranked miner in the table here, but you know, I have a policy whereby, you know, issue me the data, all the data, and it goes in the analysis. I, I can't start guessing what you've sold in your Bitcoin. Um, I won't do that. Um, <laughs> um, but they're not the only miner. I think, you know, high blockchain didn't supply it in December. They were left out for a month. And as they, the next month they were back in, you know, it's shareholders and analysts need to know what, what's happening in these companies. And you start issuing these updates monthly. And, you know, that's the expectation is there now. And, um, but it was good to see um, uh, Cypher plow an update. So hopefully, I think there's quite a lot of interest in Cypher. Um, I'll probably continue to keep them in, in the uh, in the updates um, as, as long as they provide, provide more reassurance. Yeah. yeah, a few things here. Uh, first, Cypher mining. We had them on the podcast recently. So definitely go check that out if you guys are interested. Uh, pretty great conversation talking about it. Going from a company with zero hash rate and a dream promise in a pitch deck, uh, separating from BitFury and raising much capital on market, and now a few years later have a 5x of hash online, they seem to only be growing. Um, moving over to the some commentary on the, the HODL versus su supply sold. Uh, Marathon, as you mentioned, also sold some Bitcoin in January. It looks like they sold a little bit in, um, yeah, see, 650 Bitcoin sold in February as well. So, everyone's selling bitcoin right now uh i i know as much as like difficulty has been going up but bitcoin price going up more a lot of people are thinking we might be like back into a healthy place for, for bitcoin mining we really still are in a bear market and you can see that by people selling their bitcoin to fund their operations which was an anomaly during the bull market i think that oh actually last comment here on the bitcoin production by exahash this is a sneaky chart that I think people should be paying attention to because it tells you about the mining strategy, right? So this is like an easier metric to gamify, uh, as as you've mentioned a few times to me, Anthony. But really here, what I think you do see is a, a breaking point in strategies where bit farms, they don't have a lot of hash rate online. And in fact, oftentimes we see these bigger miners like Riot and Marathon put on as much hash rate in one month as bit farms has in its entirety. But BitFarms is able to squeak out more Bitcoin per exahash uh, because they really focus on the details here. And it's a different strategy. Riot is ninth on your Bitcoin production by exahash because they're going for a volume play, right? They have a huge site at Rockdale. Of course, Akana is only going to be bigger. The other thing I'm seeing here from this chart is the likes of the hosting model versus the vertical integration model. Argo blockchain and Marathon really being the two on here that are focusing on the, on the hosting model. Argo is sort of getting back in the swing of things after having a tough few months. Uh, so them being 11th on this ranking is not super shocking to me. Marathon as well had a hard last year, but they seem to actually be improving uh, in terms of their Bitcoin production by Xash. But I think it's notable to say like everyone else who's doing very well and is in that first, second, third place, they're smaller, leaner, decentralized operations, uh, and they focus on getting as much Bitcoin out of their machines as possible. So just some some commentary there. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it there if you have any follow-up thoughts. Yeah, interesting. I saw um, a tweet today to say, and I, it's, it's certainly because the difficulty has only just changed, but it looked like even the next difficulty was, was going to be significantly higher as well. It like it was already at 13%, which actually, um, you look at the Bitcoin price today, is that linked to the fact that maybe, you know, more people are switching on as well. So there's, you know, we're seeing energy prices come down around the world and um, starting to come down slowly. So it means that, you know, mining, you know, starting to maybe, you know, come a bit more profitable. And so, you know, I mean, we, I think literally the 27th of February, we saw the global hash rate actually peak at 400 for the day. It was an intraday high, but, you know, we we're having conversations where we thought it would end up at the end of 2022, end of 2023. And I don't think anyway, mentioned. 400 and we had an intraday i have 400 so you know an interesting interesting times and um, but it, yeah it looks like um global hash rate up today and you know lots of miners still switching on even at these even at the rates of bitcoin at the moment and i did an article a few weeks ago based on um uh, hive uh, uh clean spot and um uh bit farms uh oops, hive clean spot and and sorry, Hive Clean Spark and Iris Energy um, looked at their cost production per Bitcoin. And if you look at the cash costs, I think Hive, Hive were the 
were coming out at just under twenty thousand pounds. So there's and they're the, sorry, twenty thousand dollars, and they're the, they were the you know the, the cheapest to produce. So you know you look at the others, and it was it was over. They're actually they weren't making a profitable Bitcoin based on the cash costs when the price of Bitcoin was was at sort of you know twenty over twenty twenty two thousand dollars. You know, with Bitcoin price at twenty four thousand. That might give you know more emphasis on people thinking that that's that's a good margin to to, to look at then to to you know to, to get production going. So it could be seen like you know the likes of more miners switching on. Whether there's any of that the sort of the Chinese miners switching back on now, um, you know that hash rate, you know, it'd be understandable. But yeah, it, there's a lot of hash rate out there at the moment. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of machines to go online. In the December lows, I saw some estimates saying there was about a hundred thousand plus ASIC sitting in boxes in Texas. And globally, probably around a million units that were just needing to be deployed. And some of those are probably not efficient at these rates, but certainly a glut of ASICs out there. Anthony, one thing I want to think about as we get into the last few minutes of the podcast here is forward-looking stuff. So we're not giving anyone financial advice, but we are looking at the hard data. We're looking at the past three to six months of these teams' abilities to get hash rate online. And I want to get your perspective on what you think about it. And the first is a more pointed question, and then second will be a little more generalistic. First question towards you, looking at CleanSpark, they've had a lot of different updates about units that they're able to get online pretty quickly. And then the last two updates, we've seen both Riot and Marathon throw a lot of hash rate onto the network pretty quickly, notably Marathon. While CleanSpark is still putting hash rate online, it's not to the same degree that Marathon Riot are. And then an even smaller grouping would be like the bit farmers of the world where they're maybe putting on 200 pit to hash a month, right? How do you think about these different teams uh, from your perspective as an analyst when Marathon's able to put on four exa hash in a month, but BitFarms can only manage about two hundred penta hash? It's 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 down to the it's down to the one the one biggest factor, and that is 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 having the cash available to buy these machines. I mean, you look at the the likes of Riot and Maro benefited so much from their early listing on the Nasdaq and have that you know investor appeal and it's still there now you know they might not be the two that stand out as performers each month but they're big in every other area i mean marathon had over 200 million in cash at the last quarterly update and over 250 million in bitcoin and um, yes they've had since then they've had to pay back the 50 million loan to silvergate bank and um, but that still puts them over 400 million in liquidated um, you know, cash or, or 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 assets that can be liquidated very quickly. Um, that's that's a that's a sizable amount. If you look at what the price of machines are at the moment, that gets them through. You know, to where they need to be. Riot equally um, have over two hundred million in cash and um, a sizable hodl. Not 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 the size of Mara, but a sizable hodl as well available. Um, you know, Clean Spark have done amazingly well over the last 12 months, amazingly well. But we saw in their in their last quarterly update that their current assets weren't big enough to cover their current liabilities. And they had about 21 million of current assets. So that's 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 the um the, the assets that are available within the next 12 months. And their liabilities are 42 million, which is these are the bills that need to be paid in the next 12 months. Now when you look at the size of the, the the value of the assets on the balance sheet and the fact that they're mining, you know, five, six, seven hundred Bitcoin a month, depending on how the difficulty goes, you know, it's it's not so much a bigger problem. But when you're looking at expansion, it's how are they going to expand? What what lever are they going to pull? Because they've got very little Bitcoin huddle because they like Iris, they have a strategy of utilizing their Bitcoin month by month to pay for their um, operational expenditure and their capital deployment so they've been very very effective this last 12 months but going forward to raise that hash rate further is going to require significant capital their share price has been if you compare the 11 miners from their sort of from their 12 months highs where the recovery is where the sun is coming out clean spark are not recovering their share price as quickly as some of the miners and um, i'm not unsaid sure i mean they 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 score very well in a number of metrics they really do. They've they've got a got a, a, a strong balance sheet. You know, their market capital today is around about 170 million dollars. 
they've got over 400 million of net assets on the balance sheet. So, you know, you were to buy, you know, to buy the shares of clean spot today and spend $170 million in buying the shares and own the company, you'd have 400 million of assets. Whereas some of the other companies, you know, if you were to spend the same by their market capitalization, you wouldn't have that much asset, as much assets as you're buying for. So you're, you're effectively, effectively paid a premium for some mining companies. Um, you know, you're paying that intrinsic value that's in the company, but with clean spark, they've got a lot of assets, but the, the, the key thing for them is with the share price being fairly low and they have got approval to increase that dilution because they've just, they've just approved um, the, the increase of, sh of outstanding shares, that dilution will obviously impact the share price and it's, it's, it's how they get to the next level. It's, it's a sort of like, you know, catch 22. Yes, they need to dilute, but as soon as they start diluting, the share price will, will take account of that. So it's, it, it, you know, they've got a lot, lot more challenges to grow than the likes of, you know, Ryan, Ma Ryan Mara have got so many more levers to pull. Before and and yes, both those companies right have got can increase their share, outstanding shares by more than double to fill to fill the first stage of Corsicana. So you know they already have shareholder approval. Mara didn't get shareholder approval for their uh, at the market offering, so they'll need to go back to shareholders. But they've got four hundred million in assets to utilize, and that will get you a sizable amount. I believe that you know most of the fourteen X actually they've got clubbed in at the moment is paid for. So you know. Um, to get to 23 and even most of that might be paid for because you, you pay a serious amount of upfront costs when you put the orders in and then you pay costs a period in time before they're delivered and you, and you generally make the final payment just before they're delivered so the you know the likes of bitmain and other providers effectively pay before mining machines is actually are actually delivered you know depending on on how they get from 14 to 23 so that's another 9x hash They'll have made a significant amount of those payments already. So, uh, Clean Spark, you know, have got the dilution lever. They haven't got any other levers to play. I don't think they're going to go down the debt route. They've got a small amount of debt on the balance sheet, not significant, but we've already seen the likes of, you know, Pitfall. We've seen Argo. We've seen Iris Energy have so many problems. Bitfarms and Iris Energy were very lucky in the way they structured their debt using the SPVs and, you know, were able to walk away. And that's great for them. At that particular moment in time, will you try and get debt now in the marketplace, knowing that you know two big providers have had to take serious hits with regards to you know with regards to debts? And you know, I, I, initially I thought you know who's to blame here, and I, it, you you have to look at both both sides really. You have to look at the, the lenders that they they obviously didn't realise the risks involved with with the with the price of Bitcoin and how the impact of that price affects the assets that are leveraged against loans. I don't think Clean Spark are gonna go down the I don't think they'll go down there. They, they have got a proof for dilution, it's a significant amount of dilution, but there are issues with dilution. We know that the, the, the share price will drop as soon as they go to the market and say, well they start diluting, that will impact that will impact. So it's it's a it's a, it's a challenge. Um and I think they're still trying to get to sixteen X hatch by the end of twenty twenty three. So that they've still got best part of nine and a half x apps to go but they delivered you know um a 200 percent increase in 2022 so who's to say they can't you know do something similar in 2023 it's going to be a challenge though compared to the likes of riot and mara and hut and uh, hut have got a serious um you know uh, hodl and they're going to grow they know that they're already you know when they when the merger gets approved by the shareholders with usbtc they, they're going to have the likes of five and a half x a hatch out there so that puts them in that sort of middle tier um, for, for the miners, uh, and, and with a bit, and with the Bitcoin balance to, to potentially grow to grow further. So yeah, that, that's my views on on Clean Spark. I think Bit Farms as well. Um, they sold most of their hodl. They managed to reduce their debt to twenty three million dollars. And bear in mind, it was over one hundred sixty million dollars less than a year ago. So they realised that the debt route was 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 not doing them any favours, and they managed to. You know, beg, borrow, and steal to get that debt debt position down to a more manageable level, and and it is at a more manageable level now. I mean, I think my article in August last year, they were over 100 million at that point, so they've done great strides um, to get to that position now. So it is a more manageable. If we see the price of Bitcoin at the moment, then you feel that Bit Farms can manage the current position, but from a gross perspective, their share price is really low. I think it's like 70 cents at the moment today. 
Africa, South Africa. You know, they're not even that. They, they the concern for them is they're not meeting the Nasdaq requirements for listing. They they need to get that share price back to a dollar, and um, for 10, 10 straight days before they'd be considered. You know, to to, to have that, re- that current position, and that's been flanked against the against their ticker symbol. If I look at the there's, um the good the good news that came out today was Iris Energy is starting to actually install all these miners that they've purchased. So they they purchased. 4.4 exa hash from Bitmain and basically have uh, um, de risked the um, advanced deposits they made across a increase of 10 exa hash that they did a while back. So they managed to come to an agreement, which is really, really helpful for the company. It's now filled, it's going to fill the void that they've had to, um, you know, uh, fill, having handed over the, their uh, previous miners to, back to the lender, having failed to, to, to or defaults on the low. From what the update says today, by the end of uh, March, they'll be getting close to the five and a half exa hash. That's really good news. So we'll see, we should see, maybe not that, maybe we won't see the, the Bitcoin increase, but we'll see the exa hash be significantly higher end of March than it was at the end of February. So that's positive news for for Iris. Again, to grow further, there it's it's how they're in the same bracket as Clean Spark and Bit Farms. How do they raise more money to grow further? And they're building this site at uh, Childress, which is it's a it's a massive site, but they're only um, I think the twenty megawatts at the moment is a, is a is a parcel that they're building, but it's got potential for six hundred megawatts. So they are planning for the future, but it's going to be interesting to see how how they're going to go down that route. Basically, I'm not sure debt's going to be either way forward because you know once bit and twice shy, um, the, the 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 institutions that are, you know would would kind of sit, even consider lending to. The miners would want significant amounts of collateral and make sure that there's no there's no risk at all to them. And so, the way it's structured in the future will be a challenge. Will be a, will be challenging for miners now, and the interest rates will be proportionately higher as well. I would I would think so to cover that that risk. Yeah, no, you actually got to my second question as well, which was just like a more generalistic outlook on on all these miners, which. Um, to me, the way I'm thinking about it is just about everyone has a strategy. And in 2023, we're now seeing the strategies come home to roost, right? So 2022 was a lot of the contagion, managing your treasury, and basically having to come to the conclusions and consequences of poor treasury strategies. And now in 2023, we're seeing the benefits of actually hitting deadlines and hitting uh, benchmarks on what your hash rate guidance should be. Uh, seems those things are being done. But with the caveat, of course, that there could be dilution for a lot of these miners in the future. Anthony, I think we can leave it there unless you have any final thoughts for us. Uh, again, thank you so much for joining the Mining Pod and going through all these different metrics with us. No, oh, that's um, that's fine. Um, you know, uh, hopefully we can um, introduce more metrics into the monthly updates and uh, give give you know readers uh, you know a, a, a bigger insight. You know, I, I, I'm I'm looking at now. I've, I've started to introduce a number of metrics um, around profitability, around around uh, uh, margin of costs, around um, production, around balance sheet strength. And I'm looking to try and come up with some sort of um, system whereby we can actually start looking to rank some of these miners overall, rather than just looking for production. Production is really important because, you know, I've said before, what you're doing now. Is meaningful, you know, and the past is the past, but what you do now is, is meaningful going forward. And that's why you see some of these miners constantly push out good updates month after month. And it's the same sort of same faces that are doing it. You know, the, the, the marathon and riots are so big that, you know, they, they can afford to have less production, but that, you know, that they've got other strengths in other areas. And hopefully that ranking will highlight, you know, from all the miners how we how we should be considering these but again it's you know it's, it's just going to be something i put together it's not for giving out financial advice to people to go buy miners but it it looks at a load of different rather than just looking at one or two metrics it might look at six or seven metrics and and come to some sort of like you know um, come to some sort of ranking on that love it for those who are interested definitely check out anthony's written version of this topic you can find it uh, below in the description or go to our website comesby.io go to the articles tab uh, on the top and you can find the content there uh, we are also writing something called minor madness right now hashtag minor madness go on to the twitter account compass mining or on my twitter account at wsfoxley you can download our hashtag minor madness bracket 
fill out the bracket and compete against everyone to see who is the best miner. It's a little bit subjective, it's just based on the daily share price, but just like basketball game, it could be any given game uh, you can win or lose. So we'll see what happens there. For those listening, thanks for doing so. Give us a like, subscribe, uh, give us a five star on your podcast platform of choice. Anthony, we'll see you again soon. Thanks. Thanks, Sam.